Hello, and welcome to the Aga Khan Museum shop. My name is Shoheb Gwadri, Senior Retail Manager and Product Designer. Today will be the start of a series of chats in which I will share with you the imagination behind these carefully selected pieces in the shop. From Baghdad to Bamako, Isfahan to Istanbul, Madrid to Mombasa, I have the enjoyable role of meeting with indigenous craftspeople creating works of art that have been practiced over multiple centuries, carefully preserving their craft. The product in the shop helps support collectives of all kinds, from all women's collectives to those working in impoverished and or remote areas of the world. Our mission at the shop is to bring you the very best in craft, story, and design so that you may fill your hearts and homes with a piece of your memory of the Aga Khan Museum. I hope you enjoy these series of talks and look forward to seeing you at the Aga Khan Museum or online at shop.agakhanmuseum.org. Purple the sails and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them, Shakespeare wrote. Cleopatra is said to have greeted Mark Antony on a boat with perfume sails after the assassination of Julius Caesar and became the Queen of Egypt. The use of perfume is mainly associated with mystery, fantasy, and imagination. We wear perfume to please others, to leave a good impression, to surround ourselves with a pleasing, lingering scent. Although perfume does have a long history, it has not always carried a hint of romance. The word perfume comes from the Latin phrase per, meaning thorough, and fumus, meaning smoke. The French later gave the name parfum to the smells produced by the burning incense. Indeed, the first form of perfume was incense, first made by the Mesopotamians about 4,000 years ago. Ancient cultures burned a variety of resins and wood at their religious ceremonies. Incense made its way to Egypt around 3000 BC. But until the beginnings of Egypt's Golden Age, perfumes were used only in religious rituals. They became available to all Egyptians as the priests gradually relinquished their exclusive rites. Citizens took elaborate baths and soaked their skin in scented oils for pleasure. They became available to all Egyptians as the priests gradually relinquished their exclusive rites. Citizens took elaborate baths and soaked their skin in scented oils for pleasure. Welcome back to the art and retail here at the Aga Khan Museum. Today we're going to talk about the history of scent. The museum shop has become a destination for vibrant scents from all over the world, but particularly the East, where you'll find rich, heavy notes that convey a sense of prestige, confidence, and luxury. With me, I'm happy to have Mo Khalaf, Chief Design Director of Kajal Perfumes. Mo, you and I have been working with one another for five years now, mm -hmm. and the scents that you come up with and bring to the shop for us to sell have been remarkable. Tell us a little bit about what you do and your inspiration behind these wonderful scents. First, thank you for having me and I'm, uh, it's a real honor to be here uh, with you uh, doing this. And also it's a big honor for us to be a part of the family of the Aga Khan Museum. Um, scents has always been uh, an integral part of my life ever since I grew up and um, I wanted, like, the, my creations, the, some of them that are here, are um, infused by my upbringing and uh, the, the, the way that uh, we were brought up. I tried to have this uh, uh, come out in the fragrances um, that, you, that you see. So, um, as you're aware, uh, fragrances play a major role in the Middle Eastern society in India, in uh, the, the sub, uh, Saharan continent, um, the sub-Saharan uh, region. Fragrances have played a major role in, in my upbringing. And um, 
this is what I have tried to instill and to, to portray in the fragrances that you see here. Um, fragrances play a major role in the, in the region of the Middle East and in the Indian continent and also in parts of, uh, parts of Asia. And uh, for example, the Egyptians uh, created a distillation of, of the lily you find in the hieroglyphics on, mm. on, on, in, in, the, in the pyramids. And um, also uh, there's a lot of the scientists of the early uh, Islamic era, like Ibn Zina, uh, they created uh, the processes of, of distillation that are still followed to today where um, flowers were, are mixed with uh, alcohol and uh, the alcohol is then evaporated and the re remaining um, uh, oils are, are, are kept and used uh, for either perfume uh, creation or even for medicinal purposes. So um, because it's such an integral part of our uh, history and our tradition, uh, there has uh, also come a, uh, like a ritual of, of wearing fragrances and um, of having fragrances in society that has become almost like uh, you can, you know, there are books written about this. You know, in my family, you know, always during special occasions, there was always a sense of gift giving around scent. The women would joyously receive some potion of sorts and the men it likewise in return would receive a scent of their own and really it became a defining feature of who they were. Tell us a little bit about how scents really bring out certain characteristics in people. So of course a scent is very personal and when you choose a scent you really have to um, you have to take the time to find out the, the correct scent that suits you because scents uh, tend to, ha to differ from one person to another. You should, like, when you, when you go to choose a scent, try to have yourself with nothing on for that day uh, as a fragrance. And uh, you, you go to the, um, try to, first of all, narrow down the choice of your fragrance by choosing a sense that, uh, that you find appealing from uh, the, your history and from your background. So uh, if you, like, uh, if you uh, like woody sense and you've, you've always um, appreciated a woody kind of a scent, explain that to the sales consultant so that they can offer you the different uh, scents that are woody in nature. And once you do that, uh, try them on blotters. Never try them on your skin immediately because you might not like the scent and then your prime space that you need for the, your final choices, which is your skin, mm -hmm. you will no longer have it. So I always say try fragrances when you first go to a shop. Try them on blotters and narrow them down to around two or three that you can then use on your skin because once you have the fragrance on your skin, it's much different than, it smells different than when it is on a blotter. And it might not react well on your skin, and you might take it and go home and then find out that this fragrance was not really, is not really appealing to you, and it's not really, uh, you know, you, you, it doesn't suit you. Right. Are there different types of scents that you would wear f by season? Are there certain scents that you would wear for fall, winter versus spring, summer? And are there certain times of the day where you would wear one scent over another? Yeah, so it, it is, there is this, um, this big seasonality and big choice of scent wearing even throughout the day. Some people, it, it depends on you, but some people like to have a signature scent so that whenever anybody smells that specific scent, with that type of scent, they'll know, they'll remember, for example, Shuhayb. Right. Okay, but other people uh, like to have, a, you know, like a seasonality of fragrances. Right. And so you find that in the morning, they'll wear a fragrance that sort of picks them up. 
And then uh, if they're going out to, to the gym, they might not wear a fragrance or there are certain fragrances that uh, don't even, like they have a very subtle scent, such subtle smell, and they give off an energy uh, that you can feel and it's not really projecting because you don't want to be at the gym and have, you know, annoy people around you. Right. And then there are like, if you're going out uh, for uh, at, at night, you're going out for a date, there are specific scents when specific notes and scents that you can wear that can, uh, you know, portray more um, attraction and uh, be more sensual. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the type of scent really does play a role in how you feel and uh, how you give yourself and portray yourself off to, to different people. You know, along my travels throughout the world in uh, procuring pieces for the Aga Khan Museum shop, I've noticed that scents in the East are very different oftentimes than scents in the West. There are different notes, um, some scents linger longer than others. Why do you, why do you think that scents from the East in particular are so much more stronger um, in terms of the power uh, quotient of scent as well as their longevity mm. versus perhaps scents that you may find while traveling in Europe. Yeah, it's amazing that you say that because the, the scent, uh, proce the, the, the procedure of, of wearing a scent in the East has become a, like a ritual by itself. Right. So people, uh, for example, uh, I'll, uh, people will come and f they want to prepare to go out for the night. They'll get their clothes and they'll put them on a bed. And they'll take the, uh, f the fragrance that they're going to wear and spray an initial uh, mask of, of scent on top of the, the, the entire wardrobe of what they're wearing. Right. And then they'll leave it and then go, go into the shower. Right. In the shower, they'll use, they try to always have the same scented um, uh, shower gel to right. use. So that's like a first layer that they put on. Once they get out of the shower, while they, they dry up their body and they leave it a bit moist and damp, and then they add a layer of body lotion scented with the same fragrance. Right. So that's another layer. And then while the body lotion is still not, not absorbed, they try to spray the fragrance. And this fragrance with the body lotion, uh, it clings onto um, the, the, the lotion right. better. So it creates an even uh, like stronger layer. So all of a sudden, the same fragrance that you would have wear, worn, you know, people wear here where they don't go through that ritual versus people right. who do that ritual you know, you have the same fragrance, but it just smells so much more amplified there. That's why you get that lingering effect. Right. And then what they do is before they actually get dressed, they get the incense and they get, they burn the incense and the smoke from the incense also clings to the body. You know how when you go to a barbecue right. and you come back and you smell of smoke. Right. So smoke has that, that uh, capability to cling onto the body much, much stronger. And when it's incense, it's, it's scented with, with, um, with sweet, woody um, notes that cling onto your body that make it, that also amplify your scent. You know, you bring up a great point and I think the, the customers that we have coming to the Aga Khan Museum shop are often looking to pick up a scent that harkens them back to a bygone time in their life where there was this ritualistic, this very slow down way of life and a very pampered way of life in that they followed through a lot of these, how would you say, perhaps protocols in how to make sure that their own bodies are fully enriched fully enveloped and I think that leads on to the way they eat and the way they consume beverages and I think oftentimes we'll go to Turkey and we'll find that you'll have a strong cup of Turkish coffee and then you will have some mint tea accompany it and that's very common in Morocco and Turkey and elsewhere in part of the world. 
Tell us a little bit about foods. The foods that we consume also yeah. make a difference in our body chemistry. It definitely. Uh, for example, I'll give you a very easy way of thinking about it. Do you know when you go and you eat asparagus, you have asparagus, and all of a sudden, like within the same, you know, less than 24 hours later, your body odor changes. And that just reflects that what you eat plays a role on in of you know in your body chemistry so and it, it this is emitted through the the pores that you have in your body so i always i always tell people uh, try to incorporate fragrant uh, liquids in your drinks and mm. for example uh, you can find uh, rose water sold here in in some of the big uh, superstores yeah uh, Take, get that and have, have, it, have uh, your water with rose water every day. Mm -hmm. You won't feel yourself emitting rose water, but right. that same effect of the asparagus is, will eventually, uh, does happen with the rose water. Right. And so um, subconsciously, people will uh, feel more uh, like drawn towards you and are attracted to you because these are fragrant scents that usually uh, give off a pleasant feeling. I think it also gives off a feeling of, uh, 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 of a calm and serenity and peace. And I think especially in the age of COVID, which is why we are uh, seated as far as we are for yeah. physical distancing purposes. Um, you know, I think during a period like this, we're spending so much time at home and to be able to relax in the comfort of our home by lighting up a lavender candle or a vanilla candle, it evokes a sense of serenity and calmness that I think is very similar in, in, in scents, in these perfumes that we have over here. Um, I, I, I completely appreciate the fact that uh, we are living in an age now where there is so much mass production out there. And I think how you present yourself and the way you present yourself, and I think it, it, all those five senses certainly play a role. And I think scent, and I know that we do live in a culture where people are very mindful of scents and you have to be respectful and not overdo it. In some workplace, it's a scent-free zone. But I think when the opportunity provides itself, there is such there is such a telling way of how one would read who you are by the way you project a scent, a sense of scent. Yeah, there is an art of wearing scent. Yeah. There is. The, uh, people um, should be aware of the structure of a fragrance. This fragrance are not, is not just, uh, it's not just one oil. It's actually a pyramid of different ingredients. So when one, a person is aware of the different ingredients and how a fragrance has a, uh, the, has a pyramid, mm -hmm. then they can uh, take note that there's a top note, a middle note, and a base note. And if they, they somehow manage to um, manipulate fragrances in an art form, you can wear a fragrance without offending anyone. Right. You know, so in the beginning, uh, people just put on a fragrance and go out and people get offended by it. But if you wear it in a ways where like in different areas of your body, right, they can either project the fragrance in your face or just give you a, an approachable way to, uh, to, to, to wear a scent where people don't get offended and people even don't uh, realize that that you have something on, but you feel it yourself, and that's the ultimate goal, is to, for you to, to, to feel good about it. You know, the scents that we have here at the museum shop all play a common role in that they celebrate the very best of ingredients from the East. What are the top five ingredients in a scent reflective of the East that you think portray a sense of longevity, that have the ability to really evoke a sense of uh, confidence and beauty? So one, the, the, the easiest one to say, the, the, the number one, let me say, is oud. Oud. 
Yeah. Yes. Oud from the east. Yes. This is a very... Um, when you think of scent and fragrances from the east, you immediately think of oud. Okay. Uh, then you have uh, vanilla. Vanilla is a very integral part of uh, a scent. Right. And because of the warm, uh, uh, luscious nature of the scent, it mixes in with the sharper, uh, heavier sense of oud. Right. So when you mix these two together, you sort of create a, um, a harmony. Right. You know, sort of you, like a fire and ice. They play off each other to yes. give it a sense of symbiosis. Precisely. Um, you also um, uh, cinnamon. Yes. And cardamom. Mm. These are a lot of uh, a lot of times we use these in in cooking of and course. In, in, in our in our dishes, but they are also widely used in in scents. Right. Uh, we also have uh, frankincense. Frankincense is used throughout the world, and it's derived from the, the sap of the, 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 the trees. Um, but frankincense, uh, when in the, in the east, they burn it. Right. And they use it along with the wood, wooden chips of the oud, uh, and um, they, uh, it creates a very um, warm aroma, a warm scent that is uh, usually inf infused through the smoke of the, of the incense burners that, that they have uh, commonly, that they commonly use in the, in the Middle East. Brilliant. Well, Mo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We are so proud to carry Kajal here at the Aga Khan Museum shop. It, we truly have become a destination for these vibrant scents. And we hope to continue to see you create more beautiful, <laughs> decadent Thank pieces you. for us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and uh, wish you all the best. Thank Stay you. safe. All right. <laughs>